TV news has changed. It has become loud. It has become irresponsible. It has become fake and toxic. I worked in TV news for 18 years and I'm not happy to report that in India, television news has become a circus. A Frankenstein's monster, if you may. The editors must take the blame, but you cannot blame the editors alone. It is also the making of the broadcasters, the advertisers and the audience, most if not all of you. Very recently, some editors were dragged to court. That did not stop them from justifying peddling half-baked information as news. One broadcaster was issued a warning for its unethical coverage of the death of actor Sushant Singh Rajput. That broadcaster is still defiant. In a democracy, the press is independent of the government. In India, the freedom of press has a whole new color. Earlier this year, when one channel was dragged to court for spreading hate, the government told the Supreme Court of India that if it must regulate news, it should start with the digital media. It has come to the courts and the government because self-regulation has failed and we've discussed this in one of our previous Gravitas Plus episodes. A lot of you wrote to us saying there is an urgent need for change and we agree with you. Television news has hit rock bottom and it needs to be changed, but who will usher in that change? Who will put an end to the circus? The editors, the broadcasters, the government and also the advertisers and that's what I want to focus on today. Does the onus of mending TV news lie with the advertisers? The very sound of it is unpleasant. You may also say it spells interference. But let me show you some numbers. In 2019, Indian news channels received 3,640 crores in advertising income. Advertising makes up for 45% of a news channel's revenue. What happens if that plug is pulled? What happens if advertisers dissociate themselves from certain shows? What happens if advertisers stop sponsoring hate and fake news? News channels will lose 45% of their income and that will force them to rethink their content. Wrong. If big brands pull out, smaller ones will perhaps get cheaper slots. If brands dissociate themselves from one show, they will advertise on other shows on the same channel. Look at Fox News. Its primetime show, Tucker Carlson Tonight, was slammed big time, courtesy the host's comments on the George Floyd protests. Sponsors like Disney, Papa John's, Poshmark and others said that they will ensure that their commercials do not appear in Carlson's program. The same commercials, however, were airing elsewhere on Fox. In 2009, a lot of advertisers, including Procter & Gamble and Geico, pulled their commercials from late afternoon show Glenn Beck. This was after the host called former US President Barack Obama a racist with deep-seated hatred for white people. But this did not stop the show from another two-year run with Fox News. The show only ended when the host decided to part ways with the broadcaster. In 2015, TLC faced a backlash. This was after popular TV face Josh Duggar was accused of sex abuse. Brands like General Mills, Pizza Hut, PepsiCo, Choice Hotels and Crayola LLC vowed to end their support for this show. But none of these brands took back the ad money they had previously agreed to spend on either TLC or any other Disney outlet. In June, nearly 1,100 advertisers boycotted Facebook in the Stop Hate for Profit campaign. Brands like Unilever, North Face, Coca-Cola and Starbucks were part of this boycott. You must have heard about it. But did you know that the boycott did not really dent Facebook's revenue? Turns out, the top 100 brands account for only about 6% of Facebook's total ad revenue. So it comes down to this. Pulling the plug on advertisement will not force news channels or anchors to behave. But here's what it will do. Safeguard the reputation of the advertiser. Keep them from losing customers and brand equity. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay and my case today is to the advertisers. I'm asking you to pull out of certain news channels. I'm asking you to stop sponsoring hate and fake news. Not so that those circuses masquerading as news channels can rethink their content. They probably never will. But you can save your brand and you can save your reputation from hitting rock bottom along with those channels. I will begin my argument with an example. On the 23rd and 24th of April, hashtag Renault funds hate was trending. Any idea why?
because Renault was sponsoring a show on a news channel that was spreading hate and communal tension. Tweets slamming Renault for this association poured in from across the globe. A month and a lot of flack later, Renault was forced to dissociate itself with this show. But then its reputation had already tanked. And there was a pile of uncomfortable questions staring at Renault for answers. None of this would have happened if the brand had chosen to not associate itself with the particular news channel. Can brands with millions of customers afford to risk advertising with the wrong platform? Especially in the age of social media and at a time when consumers are uber conscious. 57% of consumers globally are boycotting or buying brands because of their position on social or political issues. 36% of all consumers boycott some or the other product. And 0% brands want to fall under that bracket. Companies worldwide spend more than $540 billion on advertising. That money is meant to attract consumers, not repel them. Why then make these business blunders? Research of consumer authority Mintel shows that as many as 56% Americans will stop buying from brands that they believe are unethical. It's no different for Indians. We too have a history of boycotting brands and products. Ask Made in China Goods, they know. While brands often make a statement about their ethics and social linkages through the CSR or corporate social responsibility, they forget about their business practices and association, but consumers don't especially the Gen Y. They are being called activist consumers for a reason. They will probably never be drawn towards a product that they hear about from a news channel they do not like. Brands like Amul, Future Group, Parley, they seem to have realized this. No wonder they've asked news channels to stop being toxic. Consumers also admire brands that take a stand on issues. Tiffany's has been speaking about climate change. Apple expressed its displeasure over US President Donald Trump's ban on immigration from seven countries, all with a Muslim majority. Starbucks boss Howard Schultz pledged to hire 10,000 refugees over the next five years. The task before Indian advertisers is much simpler. Watch where you spend your money. There are 400 news channels in India. Why advertise with the rotten apples? Here's why else they should stop immediately. Because if you don't, your rival companies will benefit. Consumers respond better to brands that display responsibility. 73% of people believe that companies should do more than just offer a product or a service. In 2017, Uber lost its consumers to Lyft because it chose to play safe. It chose to not condemn Trump's travel ban. Lyft CEO Logan Green, on the other hand, put out this tweet. He pledged $1 million to American Civil Liberties Union. This tweet won consumers, as did the 1,100-odd brands when they boycotted Facebook, as did Starbucks when it took a stand against Trump's policies, as did Unilever by its stand against hate for profit, as will you if you make a statement by boycotting toxic news channels and supporting the right ones. In a global survey, 91% of consumers reported that they are likely to switch to a brand that supports a good cause. So what's stopping advertisers from supporting news and not nonsense? Advertise with channels that speak facts, not fiction. Support real journalism. Support real news channels. This is an opportunity to make a statement. Tell the world that your money is not meant to sponsor hate, abuse, noise and disrespect. Tell the world that your brand stands for more than profit. Gravitas Plus, co-presented by Skoda. Simply Clever.